If you really care about the progression of your student, if you really, really care and you're really concerned about helping them to develop as, as musicians, then you will be a good teacher. That's the key to being a good teacher. Hi Heather, how are you doing? Hi, I'm really good Victoria, how are you? I am very excited to have you here today. You were referred to us by Sam McAdam and the first time I have ever come across your work was actually from your Christmas collaboration in 2020. And then since then, I have realized that many of our guests have worked with you in some sort of capacity, either study under you or have do work with you in the conservatoire. And everyone has such fond memories of working with you. So when mm. I was told that you're going to get sent to Heather, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun talking to you. Before we start, tell us about your musical journey and how do you end up with the heart? Sure. Okay. So we'll go back many moons then, shall we? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, I first wanted to learn the harp when I was about probably five or six years old. I don't remember this, but my mum tells me the story that mum took me to the ballet and she got us front row seats so that I could really see all the dancers on the stage and be inspired because she really hoped that I would take up ballet lessons. And she wanted a little ballerina, I think, a little girl. And what happened was I went and instead of watching the ballet, I was mesmerised by the orchestra pit. And of course, because we had front row seats, I was able to look look down into the orchestra pit and see see all the musicians playing, and they were all amazing. Um, but there was one instrument that seemed to just uh, this I do remember. It seemed to just sit there and not really get played. And I wanted it was the biggest instrument there. Why is this instrument not being played? But then. Uh, further on in the ballet finally she pulled the harp towards her and it was just the most amazing sound um that she played and you know you waited that whole time and then this amazing instrument was just so beautiful and i was hooked from then um but i actually having said that i was hooked from the age of five um harping is expensive <laughs> and we could we uh it wasn't something that we were able to you know get lessons or buy a harp it wasn't something that at that time we could do as a family so mum got me piano lessons through the school which gave me a really amazing kind of grounding and foundation in music in general but i never gave up that dream of the harp <laughs> and when we were on holiday uh one year in in inverness to an old cultural kind of center of excellence called Balneen House and a lot of uh, Scottish folk musicians will remember Balneen House and they I know will have had their first interactions with folk music there too but we happened to see a second-hand Clarsach and we didn't know anything about whether this instrument would be good or bad or what it was but um, we wrote to a a trust that was set up in my hometown, Dunblane Trust. It was set up to help the children of Dunblane. And mum and dad wrote to the trust and got a grant, got the second hand Clarsach. I taught myself for the first year or so. Um, and I never looked back. And that that first heart that I got actually, um, you know, it was so, if you looked at it now, it didn't have levers, it had like an old style like blades that you twisted oh. to go yeah it was <laughs> it was a, an old heart but it was amazing and I loved it and I'd waited so long that when it when I finally got the harp to play I just wanted to play it all the time and I auditioned with that old blade harp at the conservatoire at the RCS in Glasgow and I can't believe it that I was able to get in I'd had one year of lessons with a woman called Charlotte McGurr, who didn't want to take me on as a student. <laughs> but I think my mum and dad were quite persistent. She's waited so long. <laughs> oh. 
So thanks to Charlotte McGurr who gave me a year's worth of lessons and then I went off to university. And that was that. <laughs> that was that. And you never quit hard since. Never quit since. Yeah. No. Um I did my honours, I, I got a first class honours degree at the Conservatoire and then I went on to study a postgraduate diploma in performing, um, which was an amazing year. And mm -hmm. Yeah, never looked back. What never can I say? Back. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I, I really enjoy it when people have that sort of love at first sight with their instrument. There's always a special connection in there that I can hear when they tell the story. Now, you mentioned that you have got into the conservatory in Scotland, and then you're now teaching in there, which again, um, mm. I've heard a lot from um, the guests, and you also do private tutoring and you have done online course. So you're, you're doing a variety of different teaching. Tell us about what your personal journey as a learner perhaps has shaped the way that you approach teaching. I'm always fascinated about how people teach someone to learn something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a really good question. I think that my learning journey has massively approached the way that I teach. Um, I d wasn't always, to be honest with you, I didn't always find playing the harp the easiest. There were a lot of things that I struggled with um, and I had to really work on and find different approaches to help me <laughs> to, to improve. Um, and I think that having to work on my own playing in that way has helped me when I have a student who's struggling with something. Um, it didn't just come naturally to me. It wasn't just super easy. And sometimes students are, can be a bit like, well, how come you can just do it? And I can't just do it. And I'm like, well, actually you, you might want to try this direction because I had to do that or that direction. And kind of got all these different strategies because my mm -hmm. learning wasn't always the most easy or the most smooth. And um, I also f feel like my in my RCS, I was taught by Patsy Seddon Wendy Stewart and Karina Hewitt, who are all very, very different players and all bring their own kind of amazing, unique um, approaches to music. Um, and like Wendy, for example, is so, she's such a tradition, tradition bearer. She, her degree is in science, but she knows so much about where the music comes from and she's got such an amazing respect for the music and she's so melodic about the way that she approaches things um which they, of course all of them are um and then karina studied uh she actually studied harp at university and she really helped me improve my technique and appreciate that kind of side of things um so i think having the different approaches as well i was able to take little bits from each of my teachers and then hopefully, with, as I teach, give all those little bits to my students. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> and I, I think that is so fantastic because we are all built differently and we all approach our instrument and music a little differently. And I, I think that being able to find what works for our particular mm. needs is so important. Mm. So I'm very excited Absolutely. to hear that that's Even what you're just finding. Like, even from a kind of physical point of view, like I have got short, I call them cocktail sausage fingers, right? <laughs> you too, right? <laughs> stubby, stubby right? fingers. And sometimes the chord shapes, I'm just like, how, how are people reaching these chord shapes? <laughs> and even just like finding ways of very, very slightly adjusting my technique so that I can make the stretches um mm -hmm. but still keep a good tone those sorts of things but then on the other side i have now taught people who have got really long fingers and their fingers to me look kind of like spider's legs on the strings you know i i and I, like, I remember romy's finger when she was yes yeah, so the harp. <laughs> when yeah, you say that she's got such long oh, she's got really? long arms and long really? fingers so you have to think to yourself well the way that she's going to approach so romy was one of my students the way she's going to approach um, her technique and her harp and her physicality and playing is going to be so different from mine. Um, and I need to really think about that as I'm teaching. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a really uh, healthy way to look at learning anything. 
I, I almost prefer someone who give me a bucket of strategy to choose from than to say you have to do it this one way because that is the mm -hmm. way. So Absolutely, really yeah. That. It's kind of like you see. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to compare heart playing to world hunger. However, <laughs> you know when they say give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, but teach a man how to fish and you feed him for a day, it's kind of like that, right? They teach mm. someone a tune and they'll have one tune that they'll enjoy, but teach them how to use their bodies to make a beautiful sound, then they're going to play lots of different tunes their whole life and enjoy it. Yeah, no doubt. And mm -hmm. so I have, right now, I've been taking lessons, one-on-one -on -one private lessons, and I have actually never um, been to, well, any kind of university or conservatory level to study music. What happens in there for people who are you know, curious about, you know, what, what happens in that kind of learning setting versus you know, what we're doing right now. And also how differently do you approach teaching that group of students perhaps versus mm. just people starting like myself or Yeah, others? so it's, it's, it's very different, certainly. Um, first of all, from a technique point of view, um, in the conservatoire, you would expect students to come with already a high level of good technical um, ability when they arrive at the conservatoire. So a lot of our technical work is extremely focused and you're correcting tiny things or you're um, trying to develop very small areas of technique. Like for example, you might be working on um, dynamics. And when you work on that with someone outside the conservatoire, you might be talking about piano, mezzo, forte and forte. Whereas in the conservatoire, you're talking about pianissimo and piano and mezzo piano and then mezzo forte and forte and then fortissimo and what exactly do those all mean how how are those six um dynamics going to feel different in your fingers and how does that emulate to the sound you're creating so it's kind of like much more detailed much more intense in like small areas mm -hmm. of their technique really fine-tuning isn't it yeah exactly like really picking up those little things and you know you might have a student where you're talking about uh, stopping your fingers buzzing, for example, that's a common thing, right? We've all been there. Um, stopping your fingers buzzing on the strings. Um, whereas with the with the advanced sort of conservatoire students, it's kind of a beyond a level beyond stopping your fingers buzzing on the strings. It's like where exactly have you placed your finger on that exact string? Because if you pluck it an inch higher, you're going to get a slightly different sound. So what exactly are you trying to put across to the listener when you pluck that single string yeah that's a, a, a definitely a different level of fine-tuning your techniques and and developing who you are as a musician yeah and that's kind of your technical side of things and i guess when you're working on repertoire i don't guess actually when you're working on repertoire with the conservatoire students it's much more student-led so all our students at the conservatoire, Karina teaches alongside with me, Karina Hewitt is my partner in crime, she's amazing. And when we're teaching students, we are trying to help them develop their own style and their own voice in playing. Um, whereas my students that I have outside the conservatoire, I give a lot of arrangements and I teach other people's arrangements, whereas the conservatoire students are working very much on their own arrangements and their own voice and what they want to sound and who they are compared to their music. So a lot of what you do is um, kind of exploring a style and what the student is wanting to put across in their music stylistically, helping them to achieve that, which can be quite hard because sometimes, uh, you know, they maybe choose a chord, for example, or a chord progression. And you're like, mm, I don't really like that. I'd like you to do this instead, but you have to be like, well, it's not me who's playing, it's them. And okay. so, yeah, it's an interesting um, and good and challenging situation to be in. It really keeps you fresh, I think, teaching all these different levels and approaches. And what drew you into teaching? It's a big part of what you do these days. Yeah, I love teaching. Teaching is like, oh, it's just so, it's such a, a privilege um you know you to bring someone i think it's such an honor to be involved in someone's kind of progression from where they start with you and taking them on a journey and um 
I absolutely love it. I'm so passionate about it. Um, it's definitely my favorite thing to do with the harp. And yeah, I love all different learners as well. I love to teach little little kiddies and they're plucking the first strings and you think when they finally manage to like pluck out twinkle twinkle little star and you're like yes it's so it's so awesome and i love working with adult learners who i think are wow adult lear adult learners amazing people because you guys are working a job and you've all got families and you've got a million and one things in your plate and then you're coming and learning harp too and i'm like wow you're just so awesome that you're putting so much time into this hobby and you're so passionate about it it's so cool and again it's like such a joy to be allowed to be involved in that with with someone and yeah it's just, it's really great and i actually teach at the conservatory i also teach teaching which i also love <laughs> yeah. and that's like a, yeah. a, a science and a skill on its own how to teach right? people to teach yeah. yeah it's it's great it's really good fun and I think the biggest thing is really just I, I say to a lot of my students because a lot of people teach because they need to supplement a performing income which is you know fine it's totally understandable um but some people teach because they love teaching and they really care. And I always say to my teaching students, if you really care about the progression of your student, if you really, really care and you're really concerned about helping them to develop as, as musicians, then you will be a good teacher. That's the key to being a good teacher. And I can, I can see that um, in your Harp Scotland course, which I access one of them and I watched a video and I really enjoy how calming you are in your instruction and it makes me want to continue it, it, it's almost you know if I'm if I get frustrated I feel like you're de-escalating my blood pressure and you go you can do this <laughs> it's okay I really love it and I, I think for adult learners like myself yeah it is a lot of time commitment on top of all the things that we have to do right so yeah. I think it's great that uh, we now have all these online learning platforms that we mm. can access and we can either do it on our own time at our own pace Absolutely. or we still get a, a Zoom call with you if you're a subscriber. So we have a Harp Toolbox uh, episode that is specifically on Harp Scotland. So check that out if yes. you're thinking about learning the Harp. There's going to be a lot of good resource in there for you. But now let's get back to you and your work. Okay. Um, I also know that you have published an um, album in yes. 2018. The first yes. piece of music that I've actually uh, I've heard out of that is the new Rose Lament uh, for the is it the second wife? There's many yeah. wives in wealth. Anyway, it's not it's a it's a pretty depressing title, but it was a really hauntingly beautiful piece of music, and that was sort of my first taste at your music. Tell mm -hmm. us about this album and. The story behind how you put it all together and yeah and about so, choosing the pieces oh gosh yes yeah. so that's my first and so far only solo album although i'm not completely solo actually i've got um the amazing tia files on guitar and percussion um she's a, like a long amazing good old friend so it's so nice to have her and also karina hewitt i keep on mentioning karina hewitt because <laughs> she's amazing um she produced the album and she pops in for some guest vocals nice. <laughs> so there's yeah on the album there's myself Karina and Tia and quite a lot um it was quite a an epic project the album it's called Nay Sweets for Shy Bairns and the title is very important it's an old Scots saying which means if you don't put yourself out there you'll get nothing back and this album was something I always wanted to do. I, it, I love performing, even though my real passion is teaching. I do also love performing. I love sharing. I mean, that's part of teaching as well, isn't it? Sharing your music with others. Um, and that's the amazing thing about performing. So I so wanted to, to make an album. But every time I, uh, I thought, OK, these are the tunes I'm going to do, I I would come back to them and I'd play them and I'd say, no, you can make that better. You, know, that, you can change that chord and you can play that bit better and you're making finger noise there. It's not good enough, not good enough. And 
it took me well, from the year I graduated, so 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so nine years. Nine, nine years, years in the making. Been. Yeah, and it just, you know, having the confidence to say that's what it is. And um, again, Karina, who was my producer, she said to me, you know, Heather, you have to think about your album as a, like a picture in time. Take a picture of yourself now. And that picture is not how you're going to be tomorrow. And it's not how you're going to be in a week. And it's certainly not how you're going to be in a year. It's just a musical picture of you right now. And that's okay. And so she kind of made me realize that striving for perfection, well, it doesn't even exist, does it? So <laughs> I was never going to get there. Um, and then because, because I'd been through that process, the album actually, if you listen carefully, it does have finger noise and it does have, you know, bits that are not perfect. And I kind of made the decision that I didn't want to, you know, when you're recording, you can kind of drop in and fix that bit and take that buzz out. And, um, but I didn't want to do that in my album. I wanted it to be kind of more raw. And I think a lot of my playing is quite raw and um, it's not really perfect. And it's a bit like me, a little bit, I don't know, rough around the edges <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> and uh, that's that's how I let the album. It's sitting right here, actually, look. Oh, look at that. There it is. Yeah, and I I actually quite enjoy the variety of music in there. There's uh, you have a couple of tracks on SoundCloud, so I'm gonna be picking up this album, and I can give this second wife situation a closer look. <laughs> it's it's I, like I said, it's really beautiful, and I think the the fact that you you have to come to term that this is what it is. I'm gonna have to stop it now and call it a day. Yeah. I think that's that takes some courage and conviction to do right. Yes. It is. It's, I think a lot of people don't realise how uh, how scary it can be to put yourself out there. You know, your music's like an extension of yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I there was critics. Those critics went for the album. You know, I got lots of good reviews. Some people didn't like some parts of it. And, um, yeah, scary. It can be scary to put yourself out there like that. Um, but I'm glad I did it, and I'll definitely be doing it again. That would be great. I, and I hope we don't have to wait nine years for your next album. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit sooner. We'll go for okay. four and a half. Go for four we? and a half. Yeah, let's, let's, let's shorten it a little bit. <laughs> you also have another album with a group called, I'm going to let mm. you say it because I, 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 I'm I so afraid of mispronouncing everyone's <laughs> I, Ever Ever since my my um, interviewees have taken me to Scotland and there's like interesting word that makes into the interview, I have to... I have to yeah. be really careful. Even the classic <laughs> Willow Trio had to teach me classic. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard us, works, though. They are, yes. And tell us, so tell us about this group. And I know you're not making new music anymore, but I always make a point to ask my guests about things that they have created in the past because there's nothing stopping us from enjoying things that has already been no. created. No, please enjoy it. I have thousands of albums in the house. Okay. This band, so, so buy an album. Um, yes. No, this is the band uh, Top Floor Tavers. Uh, a ta Taver is like talking a load of nonsense. That's what it means. It's a Scots word. Um, and it means just talking a load of nonsense. And um, we're a band. Um, who's in the band? So Claire Hastings on vocals. Um, Gronya Brady on fiddle and Tina Jordan Reese on piano keyboards and then myself on harp um, and vocals as well. It's a really lovely band. I really love working with other people. It takes a bit of the pressure off. And I love um, bouncing off each other, um, creating music together, just takes you to new places. And there's a track on that album called Ten Little Men. Um, and I'm really into it. You like that fun one? Dude. It's a very fun tune. I really 
like kind of experimenting with um, soundscapes and a lot of what I love. I work a lot with technology because my husband um, is an electronic musician and I really love working on that kind of stuff um, with William. And so, yeah, there's a lot of kind of like, well, actually, if you if you heard that track, basically, I made a kind of backing track essentially for us to play along. And what I, what we did was we took a sample of the world's longest, a clap in the cave, which is the world's longest reverb. Mm -hmm. And we, we took the sample, and we turned it on its head because when Claire sang the song, I was like, Do you know, that makes me think of like when someone <laughs> is on a on a breathing machine and it, you can hear the machine going like. <sighs> Yeah, because I was not what I expected, because I was listening through the different tracks. And then when I get to that, I'm like, this is different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different. So like, that's me. That's all made from a sample. And then we took a sample of a snare drum to get that kind of at the start. Um, and then there's like samples of the harp. Yeah, it was great fun. Great fun. I love making music that way. It's really interesting. And that's another thing actually about Harp Scotland is on the final week of each theme, William and I make a version of the song. Ah. Mm, and it's always got a kind of electronic -y element to it. It's, it's not always to everyone's taste, I'm not going to lie, but I think it just makes you think in a different way about it, you know? So even if you th you listen to it and you're like, oh, that's a bit weird, I'm not sure if I like that, you'll still have thought about the piece in a different way. And it will open your mind to the way that you perceive I it, the way you play it, the way you approach it. I absolutely think that you have something incredible going on in there because I remember looking up how to get kids to eat food and apparently the French people say, okay, if you serve it to them one way and they don't like it, serve it to them in a different way and just try it yeah. until they like it because something is going to click and they're going to enjoy it. So I, I think there's some merit to experiencing the same piece of music even in just different way and that could help yeah. us find our own sound too. You might, you might not exactly. know that you are a big electronic fan. Yeah, yeah so you don't like only it. get three versions of the tune, <laughs> you get four versions <laughs> of the tune. <laughs> now, is, can, so is there something that we can play with other people? I'm just asking our personal interest, because I play in a harp circle, and we always look for things that we can play with each other. Can we take Harp Scotland tune and play with other people? Yes, you can. Yes. So the beginner, intermediate, and advanced arrangements for the Harp Scotland pieces fit on top of each other. Okay. So share them with it. each other, play together. Isn't that the most amazing thing about music? I think so. And I think that's what really good about the, the Celtic music, sort of like the yeah. communal feeling, playing with others, being with others. I, I really like yeah. that. Yeah. And that's the, that's the funny thing, isn't it, about performing is that like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the most, the, on stage in front of a crowd of people is probably not the most comfortable place for me to be which sounds strange because i know i'm a performer but scottish music really if you think about the performance setting that it was uh, born from you know it wasn't music of the professional musician who came and played for you on a stage it was the music of the people that was you know shared and enjoyed around the fire in a bothy you know it was the way that people passed um morals to their children stories and um, what was passed through song you know and that's the way that we kind of have taken scottish music now and commercialized it we've almost made it something something else which is amazing because scottish music is a growing and living tradition so we're kind of making we're making the tradition of today for tomorrow which is cool and exciting and I think also really good to also look back and see where it's come from and understand that as you kind of progress it forward. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, and now I'm going to ask you about my favorite thing out of all the things that I have seen you ever done so far, which is your Christmas harp collaboration. It was epic because there was a hundred sixty. Am I? Did I get it wrong? Hundreds around sixty. Hundred sixty people in the video. Hundred sixty-six. Sixty-six in the video, and I remember watching it when it first came out in last Christmas, and I was just actually starting to got friends in the heart world. So I recognized a couple face, and then when I revisit the video again, when I was preparing for this interview, I'm like, ah, 
I know this person, I know this person. There's so many familiar faces in there. It was awesome. What prompted you to create this project? And what was it like for you as the organizer to see this massive response from everyone? Well, I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, but it was very- Are you sure? Because I imagine 166 video was a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, I say it was stressful, but I'm doing it again and I'm hoping to get more. You but are. what what, okay. ha what happened? I got lonely in lockdown. I was like, I can't, I can't see my students. I'm not playing music with other people. I miss that. I just missed people. Um, and I wanted to play with people. So I thought I'm going to do this art collaboration thing. I'm going to arrange some Christmas songs. Cause let's be frank, Christmas, Christmas music. I love Christmas music. I think awesome. everyone does. I, I know like by, you know, January that everyone's like, ah, I'm so over. And then now I tell you, we're all ready to go again. I'm ready. I know I'm ready for it. <laughs> I love Christmas music. I love it. Um, and it, it's the, just the best on the harp. So the harp was made for it, right? Anyway, yeah. so I was like, I'm going to do an arrangement of Christmas music and I'm going to um, do this collaboration. I'd seen some people do it with choirs um, and I was like, I'm going to do it with harps. And I thought when I launched it, I thought, you know, if I could get like 20 or 30 people, how cool would that be? That would be amazing. So the number when people started signing up and I saw them all come, I think in the first day there was 50 and I was like, what have I done? How, because I, I, I had thought in my head how roughly how I was going to do it, but I'm not a video editor. Um, so that was a very steep learning curve. And there was, in the end, there was 305 or three, I can't remember, over 300 people signed up to do the, the actual collaboration. 166 sent their videos because they felt, a lot of people felt they didn't have just quite enough time to get something ready, but I'll address that in a minute. Okay. okay. In a minute, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, my husband helped me a lot. We made the click track for people to, to play along to, but I didn't want it to be Which just I was told is very few <laughs> People so, find it very yeah. soothing, so. <laughs> a little nugget out of this project. <laughs> the click track apparently is. <laughs> So basically, well, when so when you're recording with other musicians, you quite often get a click track yeah. in your ears and it can be quite uh, scary because it's just this tick, 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 and it's like, where am I? Sometimes it can be a bit panicked. So I was like, when I, when I make this click track, I want people to feel calm and know where they are. So I didn't just make the click track. I played on the click track and I spoke on the trick clap, click track and I was like, okay, now you've got four bars and I'm going to count you in. Everybody ready? So yeah, it wasn't a click track, essentially. It was like a yeah. play along with Heather. And yeah. yeah, a lot of people got back to me and said, it was so, I don't think I've got a calming voice, but everyone was like, oh, I could fall asleep to your click track. Oh, trust me, have you still talk about the click track a year after the Every oh time gosh. we want to do a collaboration, we're like, can we talk Heather into doing a click track for us? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I am doing, it was, it was really hard, but when I finished it and we put it all together, I've honestly, it'd be hard to look back and think of a moment where I've been more proud of achieving something because I was so proud of that. Just seeing everybody come together, like lots of people dressed up. And, it was and, um, amazing. Oh, Adriano so even nice. got lights around him. I, I know. <laughs> Adriano's like this and he's got yeah. lights and he's playing and then he's like, I know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, it was so good. So we're gonna put a link. Actually... We have to link your video in here. So that yeah, do. So if you asked me in January, which a lot of people did, Heather, are you gonna do this again? Yeah. The answer would have been no chance. <laughs> no way am I doing that again. No. I don't... But now I've had it. It's been long enough ago that I am. Everybody, you heard it here. I've not told anyone, so it's an official announcement on Talking Harps. I'm doing the Christmas collaboration again. So for us Heather Click Track fans, there's a second chance <laughs> for another one. Yes, and not only is there a second chance, but um, it's going to be the whole Christmas collaboration, learning videos, music, etc., etc., oh is goodness. going to be launched in September. 
All right. So you've got loads of time to practice. You've got all the time in the world to practice. I'm going to sign up the entire talking hub contingent <laughs> for your <laughs> collaboration. And I did, a, I did a little look up on the internet before I talked to you. I think the largest harp ensemble in the world right now has 420 people. Do you want to so break got, the record? Like, are you absolutely. ready? Absolutely. Let's edit 500 videos. Let's do it. 500. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, let's aim, aim let's high. Aim high. <laughs> let's aim high. So where can yeah. we find information about this uh, collaboration? So um, I'll be kind of redoing the Christmas collaboration page, which was on my website. So again, heatherdowney.co.uk. Um, okay. Go there for the Christmas collaboration. And actually... Harp Scotland is also going to be tied into it. So the theme yeah. for Harp Scotland, September, October, everyone who subscribes is going to get, a, they're going to be kind of featured at the start. So the start of the Christmas collaboration okay. this year is going to be all Harp Scotland people with their own personal section. Oh, fine. And then we'll go into, yeah, and then we'll go into the kind of bigger 500 harpists section. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the Christmas collaboration project is 100% free to join. It's just meant to be fun. There will be three, well, there are, I've, I've just finished arranging it okay. today. Today. Okay. Yeah. So there's three different levels. There's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. There's three different tunes. Shall I announce it? Yeah, let's announce yeah. it. Shall we? Tell us. Oh. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> so the tunes are, well, the first one's got to be Scottish because it's linked into Scottish, Harp Scotland. So it's a Christ Child Lullaby which is a tune from the islands, um, an old kind of Sam song. Um, and then we're going into the classic Away in a Manger, right? And then we're going to finish off, oh right, yeah, we're going to finish off with a nice, jolly, super Christmassy finish with We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Nice. I'm yeah. looking forward to this. I, I did miss the boat last year, I have to admit, and it was a tight timeline, but I was very happy when you tell me that you're going to start this in September because then we'll have plenty yeah. of time and we're going to make sure exactly. you have plenty of time to edit the video too because yeah you got, if you got 500 you might need a little bit of time yeah it's gonna be interesting and then shout out to Willie on this as well my husband again because I edited the video but William edited all the audio oh my so God. he took I know and he spliced it together everyone's audio and the other thing I would say if anyone's listening to this is even if you do just a tiny bit of you don't have to do the whole thing you know if you sign up and you're like whoa there's three tunes it's too much just pick a section that you like you don't have to do everything just do a little section and the other thing i want to say is when i edited the video together i made sure that when you were on screen you looked like you knew what was going on so I'm not going to use the section of the video where people are going, I, I won't use that. So don't worry. <laughs> when you're you take screen, care of you us. Look, absolutely. You, you take You'll care make of sure us. Like, I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I saw some really beautiful, you know, lights and hats and yeah. outfit. It's such a fun so thing nice. to do. Yeah. No, yeah. It's really you. fun. Yeah. So 500, come on. Yeah. We're going to aim high. 500. Let's try that. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So what other projects you have got going that you would like to tell us about? Well, I mean, we've talked about so many projects. Oh, I I I've, I've, I'm going to have to refer to my yeah, list here. I like your list. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't prepare. Um, so the first, the first thing that's kind of a personal, like, adventure for me, talking about my passion for teaching, how much I love teaching, one of the things within my teaching that I feel personally quite strongly about is that you continuously strive to to be a better teacher i think if you're standing still you're not progressing your students you're not progressing yourself and you're not progressing your students so i really love opportunities to learn more about teaching learn more about learners etc cetera, etc cetera. one of the things i actually do every kind of three or four years is i learn a new instrument from scratch because i think it makes me a better teacher and how many instruments have you learned so far? So far, I have learned guitar, fiddle, and my last one was flute, which was actually, it's up there, which is why I'm looking up there. It was, learning flute was really interesting because that was the first woodwind instrument I'd ever played. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So you're having to actually think about controlling your breath whilst playing. Hats off to the woodwind people because that was tough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really like to improve my teaching. So something I'm doing now, I'm not actually learning a new instrument, but I am starting in September a master's in education. So I'm super excited about Very that. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. And that's a three year course. So I'm just getting my head down and I'm, I'm really excited. It's a master's in education in learning and teaching the arts. So really specific to teaching music and I'm hoping that it really helps me develop my teaching skills and yeah I'm, I'm so excited about that so that's my first I exciting project that's a that's, personal one that's a big one for your commitment big one yeah big, big one. one but it's gonna we're be gonna have to thing. get you to come back later and tell us about some of the things that you've learned or yeah interesting findings yeah. yeah I'd love to do that in fact my final year is a big kind of project and what I'm interested in studying is creativity and um, like uh, develop, like developing style and how, how to support a student through that. So in two years time, I'll be looking probably for people who want to take part in the project. Yeah, come so back. I'll come possible. back and tell you all about it. Yeah. So that's exciting. That is very exciting. And then the, the other thing, obviously Harp Scotland is always, always ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the other thing that we're launching next summer um, is a retreat, Harp Holiday with Heather. Oh, say again, Harp Holiday with Heather. How does this work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I want a Harp Holiday with Heather. Right. So basically what we've been doing, one of our projects over lockdown, my, again, myself and William, we have been um, renovating the upstairs of our house. Well, we started last year and we rewired the house. And when we okay, did it- That's a big so project. The, floors, <laughs> the big project. The floors, when we did it upstairs, all, they were so old that they all just disintegrated away into dust. So that was, that was fun. That was that. <laughs> that was that. Was that. So we were like, okay, well, we, we need new floors. So we might as well redecorate the whole upstairs. So we have a spare room, which we are renting out for people to come and have a really bespoke harp holiday with me. Um, so you really can do, it's completely up to you what you want to do. It's completely individual. Um, I will tailor it to whatever anyone wants so you can come with your family you can come by yourself you can come with a small group of, of heart friends um, and we can work on whatever you're interested in working on we are so lucky with where we're situated and that we're in the countryside so we've got lots of lovely peaceful walks and i can do some home scottish cooking for you um, we're also very close to the train stations so if you want to wander off and have time by yourself that's great too um, Sterling Castle's close by if you want to do something cultural or we could climb up the Maya if you want to go up one of the mountains anything that you want we will cater to your needs and of course that includes harping so you can have a one-to-one -one lesson we could work on arranging if there's a group of you you might be interested in working on how to put harps together whatever you're interested in improving um you can come here and I will help you do that and we have a home and we have a home studio here which um is williams <laughs> but something that william has learned over our whole relationship is how to be an excellent recorder of harps it, it's it's tricky recording it's so tricky. tricky it's so tricky so if you're interested in say recording some of your material i mean maybe not making a whole well you can make a whole album if you want to but you might want to just put down a couple of bits or maybe learn a bit more about electronic music and how the harp can fit into it you might be interested in pedals or looping or any of these sorts of things um then you can work with myself and willie when you're here if that's what you're interested in doing so there you go it's bespoke harp holidays it's like pick your own harp adventure with heather and william Completely, yeah, completely bespoke, whatever you are looking for. If you're interested in developing your teaching, then you can come. I, I often have people who observe me teaching 
and my students are used to it you learn so much through observation with, with mm -hmm. teaching like so much and um, so if you are someone who thinks you might be interested in teaching you want to learn a bit more about that then you can come and stay and watch the lessons and um, you know get a bit of teaching advice etc etc whatever element of harping you're interested in will help you I, I i i'm really enjoying this idea because we have always been talking about a, a talking harp team retreat this might be it this is it this, this is the place to it. come this yeah yeah i love it okay well and we will have to keep an eye out on your um info and i, I presume we can read about that on your website too when you're ready to launch the project yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've just got a few finishing touches to do. And so a few people have asked me about price. And it's kind of like, well, it just depends on what you want. Like you some people might want to spend six hours a day with me, some people might want to spend two hours and then go off. And it just depends on what you're looking for, how many meals you want, if you want us to take you on a trip, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's completely tailored to you. So there's no price. It's just whatever you want, and we'll work it out together. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to start them next summer when hopefully travel is a bit easier. Yeah. Let's hope. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers very much crossed. But yeah, we live, we're so lucky where we live. Um, this it's lovely in the countryside. And the one condition mm -hmm. is that you have to be okay with dogs because my dogs are my babies. <laughs> Well, I've seen a dog running around before and they look actually quite friendly and well behaved. So Oh yeah, they're all, they're very them. friendly. They're very, very friendly. Um but yeah, you have to you have to love love me, love my dog. <laughs> have a holiday with Heather and her dogs. <laughs> that's it. That's I love it. it. Well, this is awesome. Thank you so much for telling us about all the exciting things that are happening in your world. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm really looking forward to this harp collaboration we're gonna try to get 500 people let's let's aim for 500 i think we need to break let's the world record for you I, which surely we can do it we, you can and we'll just make sure you have plenty of time to edit all 500 oh, yeah. videos you, can you imagine though if we got a world record how cool it, that would be amazing it would be really amazing i think this is something that we, we the harp community we can pull this together i have faith in us yeah 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 let's do it Awesome. Nice. Thank you. So we are going to post your website link in our uh, video description. And don't forget to check out Harp Scotland on Harp Toolbox. Learn about that course. Really great. And I look forward to chatting with you again about your master study and playing with you in yeah. the collaboration. Yeah, I will look forward to playing with <laughs> yes. you. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, Victoria. Bye. Bye.